Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Creepy Encounter Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. This story happened around three years ago, around the time that COVID started. So it was a while back, but still worthy of a post. It was early 2020, and I had just gotten a new job in a small town near my area. While looking for a place to live, my sister offered to rent her house to me. She had bought the house two years prior, but she and her husband didn't really take to it, and their commute to work was long, so they moved out and the house was uninhabited. Luckily for me, it was actually pretty close to my workplace, only around a 40-minute drive, and my sister pretty much rented it to me for free. I just paid for the water and electricity and looked after the house. I was living there for a solid two or three months and had already gotten used to it. One night after coming back from work and parking my car, as I walked towards my door, I noticed something odd. There was a cigarette butt on the curb to my house. I leaned down and picked it up, thinking that it might have been mine since I'm a smoker. But after looking at the brand name, I realized that it wasn't mine and threw it away. I didn't think much of it and just shrugged it off as some butthole throwing it on my curb. I went on my night and nothing unusual happened. Two days later, I was once again walking to my house when I spotted a few more cigarette butts, this time near my porch. Needless to say, I was angry and thought that someone sat on my porch and smoked. But since I didn't know who it was, there was nothing I could do about it. I noticed that they were put out pretty recently, so whoever it was probably walked off as I was approaching. That night, I was watching a movie on my laptop, and it was pretty late past 1 a.m., so I was surprised when I heard a car passing by. It's a suburban neighborhood, and it was COVID, so people rarely ventured out at night, but I didn't think much of it. Around half an hour later, I was surprised when I heard chattering nearby. I listened intently, but I couldn't hear what they were talking about, as their voices seemed almost muffled and quiet. By this point, I was getting a bit unnerved, so I stopped the movie and quietly got off of my sofa and walked to the front door to make sure that it was locked. As I was approaching the door, I froze mid-step as I heard the two approaching my porch and reducing their talking to a whisper. I realized right away that whoever this was wanted to break in. I leaned against my front door and waited, expecting a loud bang against the door or the doorknob being shaken, but it was oddly quiet. I decided to walk over to my window to see if they had walked away or changed their mind. My windows have bars from the inside out that you have to unlock so that you could move the curtains or look out the window comfortably. I slowly unlocked the bar mechanism and lifted it up. I moved the curtains and was taken aback. Leaning up against my window was a man. He was as startled as I was, because he basically stuttered over his own steps as he jumped back. He tightened his hoodie to cover his face, so all I could really see was his big blue eyes staring at me. His friend realized what was going on, and right away started to kick the door in. He kicked it a solid four or five times, but the door wouldn't budge. All the while, I was staring at them frozen in fear, trying to comprehend the situation. I snapped out of it and slammed the bars over my window, locking them and running upstairs to the storage room, where I pushed a table up to the door and called the cops. As I listened and expected the two to come inside at any minute, I heard a loud crash and the bars from the windows being shaken aggressively. When they realized that they couldn't get in, one of them let out a long, angry scream that probably woke up half the neighborhood. By the time the cops came, they were long gone. The police couldn't find out who it was, but they were more active in the neighborhood in the following weeks. Regardless, I wasn't too keen on staying there, so shortly after I moved out. My sister sold the house a few months later. And as far as I know, 
Nothing similar ever happened since. So I took my dog out on a walk yesterday. It was overcast, but daytime, and we hadn't been out long. We were still close to home. My dog was sniffing away at a patch of grass, and I'm watching him and sort of just daydreaming, waiting for him to be done. Really quickly, out of nowhere, he jumps up and spins around, facing the path behind us. I thought that he'd spotted another dog, but no. I turn around, and there's a man, sort of crouched down low, doing a really over-exaggerated sneak towards us. It honestly looked like something out of a cartoon. I was just stunned, and my dog was standing there with all of his fur puffed up. Didn't have a chance to say, hey, what are you doing or anything, because as soon as we caught him sneaking towards us, he turned around and ran off. If this had happened on one of our night walks, or early morning ones when it's dark, I think I would have had a heart attack. It was freaky enough during the day and close to home. I'm not really sure what he would have done if he'd managed to sneak right up to us, or why he thought that he'd even be able to. My dog is a German Shepherd, so I usually feel quite safe while walking him. I'm not sure if this belongs or not, so if not, just let me know. When I, a 31-year-old female, was 16, I was in a choir at my high school that performed for a lot of different events around town. One of them was to sing at the middle school's sporting events. The middle school in my hometown, there's only one, is just about a half a mile from my local childhood home. So whenever we had events there, I walked. I didn't get my license until I was 17. This one night, I think it was November, we had to sing at a basketball game, and it was obviously dark when I was able to leave. Normally, I wasn't allowed to walk alone at night, but for choir, I was given permission unless I felt unsafe. But there wasn't any reason to be creeped out at first, so I started my walk. Just down from the middle school is a stretch of road with almost no street lights that has always creeped me out when walking. I crossed quickly and had a fast pace going as I am a naturally paranoid human. About two minutes into the dark zone, I heard rapid footsteps behind me. I at first figured that it was just a jogger, but they made no attempt to pass me and just stayed a comfortable, for them, 10-foot distance. They began whistling a jaunty tune, which at first I thought was fun. At this point, I wasn't super scared, perhaps because of the happy whistling tune, but I noticed the footsteps began to speed up. There were no cars on the road, and given the lack of light, when I turned around, all I could see was a silhouette shrouded in darkness. At that realization, I quickened my pace to barely under a run. The whistling continued getting more breathless as this person began to run after me. I looked back to see a dark figure coming at me full speed, and in terror began to run frantically as well. I will never forget those last moments, running through my dark subdivision, hearing his whistling and footsteps getting closer and closer. This person followed me up to my door. I ran inside and locked the front, checked all other doors and went to my upstairs bedroom. From the window, I could still see a silhouette and could still hear them whistling. I slept with my knife that night. This seems like the right place to tell this story. It happened back in 2013. It was about 8 or 9 o'clock, and I was on my way home from a pal's. I was sat upstairs at the back of the bus. 
There was only me and one other person on the top floor of the bus, and he was sat near the front on the opposite side. When I got up to get off the bus and walked from the back towards the stairs, he called me. I don't remember exactly how he asked, but he was asking for a lighter. I walked up to him going through my pockets and told him that I had matches and handed them to him. He took them from me and just stared at them for a good few seconds and then handed them back to me and said something along the lines of, don't worry about it. The time it took him to decide not to use them felt very strange and the eye contact before and after just felt intense. I got walked down the stairs thinking, what the heck was up with that? And I got off the bus. I told a couple of people how weird it felt and described what he was wearing, a zip up black hoodie with a knockoff Hardy style tiger on the chest. Fast forward about a week and there's a fatal stabbing on a bus in my city. A young girl on her way to school was stabbed to death on the top deck of a bus. Stabbings are pretty common in my city, but a young girl being killed on her way to school, that's big news anywhere. They show a photo of the suspect being arrested, but you can only see the back of his hoodie. Straight away, I think that's the exact same Ed Hardy knockoff and was just wondering if it was the guy that I had seen. When they released more photos of him from the front, I knew that it was him. The scary thing is, it transpired, and he had recently been let out of a mental health facility. He hadn't been given any support, and had been sleeping rough on buses. I've had many interactions with mentally ill people, and dangerous individuals, but this is one that stays with me. Even though the interaction was much, it felt so strange. I always wonder if he was seeing how I reacted when he asked me, hence why he didn't use the matches. Who knows? It's just a sad story, really. Rest in peace to the poor girl who was unalive. Her name was Christina Edkins. She was only 16 years old. This happened over a decade ago. My ex and I decided to hitchhike across California because we were bored and homeless and had nothing better to do. We stopped in a small town and found a little stream underneath a bridge. My feet were hurting really bad, so I took my shoes off to cool them in the water, and that's when I noticed movement in the bushes to my left. A strange man walked out staring at me. He made a movement with his finger as if he wanted me to go into the bushes with him. I froze, and I yelled for my ex who was on the bridge waiting for me. He came running, but the man was already gone. It was insanely creepy, but I'm used to weird things happening to me, because I look much younger than my actual age. I know that he must have thought that I was a child. It's unnerving to think that someone could be comfortable enough to do that in the daytime. And that is why I never go exploring by myself. I live in an apartment building, and I guess there was a girl with a name similar to mine with long brown hair who moved in and she was going on dates at her apartment through the internet. He thought that I was her, and he followed me into my apartment. He said he went down to look at the register in the lobby and saw my name. Yes, we have first and last names posted for deliveries, and our names were really similar, i.e. like Kristen and Christine, or Brianna and Brianne. Anyway, he followed me like I said, and then looked down at the registry downstairs and just assumed that I was this woman. So he knocks on my door. I answer it and he tells me that it's his birthday. Now keep in mind, I have no idea about any of this. And so I say, oh, okay, happy birthday. 
So then he says that he would give me $60 to go and hang out with him and his friends. And that if I wanted to quote unquote party, he would supply it for me. And that he and his friends would pay me for anything quote unquote extra. I was completely confused. I said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I don't want to go to your birthday party. I don't even know you. To which he replied, well, I saw your ad on the internet and replied and you gave me this address and I saw you and blah, blah, blah. He tells me the story like I described in the beginning of this post. I said, no, that's not me. I am not that type of person. Seriously, so strange and creepy. Edit. To be honest, I was still somewhat perplexed until I told a neighbor a few months later. And apparently this woman got booted from the building because of the traffic to her apartment. I'm glad that the management didn't get us confused. As we live on different floors, the complaints of traffic were specific to her apartment. Thank goodness. Did I overreact? Or was this actually super dangerous? A few days ago, I went out for a smoke in the park with my bike. It was already 10 p.m. on a Thursday, and I was looking for a spot to light up my joint. Near the park is a playground, and it's a less populated area of the park, especially at night. Most likely because there are no lights in that spot. So I go there with my bike, get off my bike, and stop there to light up my joint. At that moment, I only hear steps approaching me. I turn back and I see a person, probably male, six foot tall, walking towards me. It was dark, and I couldn't see a face or what exactly he wore. I also looked only for an instant and rushed away with my e-bike. Now here is the chilling and confusing part. That person didn't use the road, he walked through the playground towards me. The playground had gravel stones. That was the only reason that I was able to notice that person walking towards me. I also noticed him when he was just about 10 feet away from me. So I wonder why he didn't accelerate when he was so near me. He didn't make any other noise, like saying good evening or laughing at me. When I rushed away, I thought about turning back with my lights on to see who that person was and I was too afraid. I'm still wondering why someone is alone in the dark on a playground, walking towards me, a stranger, not using the road, and not saying anything. So a bit of a backstory first. Me and some friends knew this guy over the summer because one of my friends was cheating on her boyfriend with him. He knew, so there wasn't like any animosity between him and us. But the guy was always a creep. For example, I have scars on my arm. Not bad at all. You have to look really close to see them. But this guy was looking close. Like I could feel his stare burning a hole through my arm kind of close. He was also very touchy with my underage friends. I kind of freaked out and made sure that none of my friends went around this guy. So flash forward to now. I'm in a store, 6.32 p.m., and it's nighttime. I'm buying fresh scooped ice cream for me and my mom, and I'm about to walk home. Then this guy walks in and says, hey, with the most blank, creepy voice ever and you know when you see into someone's eyes and there's nothing like I mean nothing in their eyes yeah that was this guy like I mean mega seriously uncanny valley so I'm starting to ignore it that's when bro is like what's you gonna do I'm in a store so I walk out with my ice cream I take the back worker entrance because my mom works there. 
it wasn't her shift. And this guy follows me. Like, I don't know why he would. My hair was a mess and I was wearing sweatpants and a hoodie with chocolate stains on it. So I keep walking fast. And this dude is still following me. So I make it to the bend of my road. Now he does too. I'm halfway down and a car has to pass through. So he watches me go home from the edge of my road. What a creep. And my mom's response? Huh, I'm sorry that happened. And she went back to watching TV. Now I have to walk to the bus stop. But I'm super scared because it's dark out. There's an abandoned house that you can get into on the way. You could hide in there. And I know this dude has a crap ton of time on his hands to do something like this. I'm only 16. I just want to be on time to first period so that I don't get a detention. As I was walking home from work last night, about halfway to my house, a disheveled man who looked to be either homeless or extremely down on his luck cross paths with me from the other side of the sidewalk. He had initially been walking in the opposite direction, but as soon as he saw me, he immediately turned around and started following me. He began rambling incoherently and aggressively, and his words were so slurred that I hardly understood a thing that he said. All I could make out was something about a care package and look at you. It was obvious that this man was under the influence of multiple substances. I quickened my pace and tried to avoid any eye contact with the man, and he was getting agitated that I wasn't paying attention to him. When my walking speed got too quick for his inebriated stumbling to keep up with, he stopped talking and instead began just trying to follow me. I kept looking over my shoulder at him, and every time I saw him, he would either stop or try to duck behind a bush. Finally, I started outright sprinting and looking for a spot that I could hide in myself. I came up to my local mosque and tried to sneak around the corner into the parking lot of it, where there was a tree that I had hid behind. While hiding there, I frantically dialed 911. I told them that a strange man displaying unstable behavior was trying to follow me and describe my location, myself, and the man to them. The dispatcher assured me that officers were on their way to where I was. But while waiting for them, I saw a figure heading up the sidewalk in front of the parking lot that I was hiding in. Panic immediately filled me, until the passerby was close enough that I could see that it was not the same man who had just bothered me, and they turned out to be harmless. Mere moments after this, the cops arrived to where I was, pulled up next to the tree, and motioned for me to come out and talk to them. The officer driving the vehicle asked me the standard questions a description of the incident, where I was when it happened, etc. While we were talking, he spotted a man in another parking lot down the street, not far from where I had encountered the creep. He asked me if that was the man that I had encountered, and it was hard to tell between the darkness and the distance, but I was pretty sure that it was. Another police vehicle had pulled into that parking lot, and it appeared that the officer got out to talk to the man. The officer that I had been talking to asked me how far I was away from my house, and I told him that I was pretty close to my street at this point. He assured me that I should be safe to walk the rest of the way home, and that they had other cops patrolling the area. I thanked him and finished walking home without further incident, thank God. Shortly after I got home, I saw that I had a text from my boyfriend that read, Are you okay? The text had been sent at around the same time the incident was occurring as if he could sense that I was in a fearful situation. I replied back, telling him what had happened. He told me that he had gotten yelled at by a homeless man earlier too. I described the creep that I encountered to him and asked him if he thought that it was the same guy. He said he didn't think so. We also had a brief phone call to make sure that each other was okay. I let him know that I was home safe, and he told me that he was in a vehicle with a group, so he was safe too. I don't know what the cops ended up doing about the man, 
but I hope that he stays as far away from me as possible. This happened seven and a half years ago, June 23rd, 2016, while I was out cleaning my house. I was renting a house for a year, and the year was almost up. I wasn't going to be living there the next year, so it was time for me to start cleaning out and moving my stuff to my next place. The house that I had at the time was fairly small, but it was plenty of space for just me. I lived there by myself, and I had just finished cleaning out the living room other than some basic furniture, and I had moved on to clean the kitchen. There were quite a few cabinets, so many that I didn't use a good number of them. I was looking through some of the ones that I didn't use to make sure that there was nothing I had in them. One of them I opened up, and I saw something in the back corner. It looked like some type of shirt or rag. I grabbed it and saw that I didn't think that it was mine. But when I moved it, it revealed a small white lever that I could barely see. The cabinet was in the quarter, sorted by the sink and halfway blocked by the stove. I thought that it was just another pipe, but it just looked a little different to me. I got inside and had to crawl inside the cabinet, which was pretty large. Once I got inside, I saw that there was a small trap door to the side leading into the wall. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You had to be completely inside in order to see the detail of it. And I decided to open the door, which led to an extremely narrow hallway with a sort of crawl space. But when I got farther inside, I was horrified. I saw that there was food, as well as several blankets, as if someone had been living inside of there. The good news, at least to me, is that whoever was in there was gone. I tried to make sense of it and figure out how long the person had been there and how I didn't know about it. I was gone from the house a lot with work and other stuff, but I didn't know how it was possible for someone to live in there without me knowing. I continued cleaning until it got pretty late, and the next day after work I continued. I was still kind of in shock with finding a secret room in my house and decided to look at it once again. I opened the cabinet and went inside. Then I pulled the lever open just like I had the previous day. But this time, as soon as I opened it, I saw movement, and then saw a person for a split second. They slammed the door shut back on me, and I immediately turned and ran all the way out of my house to my car and then called the police. I was so scared that I started driving away as well. I opened up my phone, told the police the whole situation, and they came to my house a short time later to find that whoever had been there was now gone. I was absolutely disgusted knowing that this random person had access to my house for who knows how long. It felt like a vivid nightmare that I needed to wake up from. When I opened up my phone to call the police, it showed that the date was June 23rd, 2016. I still remember this date seven years later. It stayed with me like a scar. I don't know if I will ever heal from it. Luckily for me, I moved out the next week. I really don't know how long the person was living in my secret room, but thankfully, they never gave me a problem. Thanks for reading my true horror story. As someone who has already experienced things like home invasion, I would always suggest that you lock your doors because you can never know what people can do when they are in your house. I'm a 31-year-old female, and I used to work at a restaurant in my early 20s as a hostess. Back then, I was a people pleaser and didn't have the backbone that I have now. During my shift, there was a man in the bar area, which can be seen from my stand, who eventually approached me. He was in his 50s, probably 6 foot 3 inches, muscular, large build, dark hair, and he dressed well. When he approached, it started out as small talk. I can't remember the beginning of the conversation, 
but then he started asking me if I had considered a different job and said that I should come work for him, but he wouldn't tell me what he does. He started asking me for my phone number. I didn't feel comfortable giving this stranger my personal information, so I told him that he could call the restaurant and ask for me. I'm there a lot. He didn't like that answer. He continued asking, and I gave him the same answer. Finally, I told him that I'd give him my email. I gave him a fake email address on a piece of paper, obviously. I made it look real, but I wasn't interested in continuing the conversation because he was being very pushy, so I excused myself to the back. I remained friendly and smiled during the entire exchange because that was my job. After avoiding him for a while, I saw him going back and forth from the bathroom, eyes darting around the restaurant, head turning around every which way. He was clearly looking for me, and I was actively avoiding him. I started to get scared, thinking maybe he was trying to kidnap or traffic me or something, which didn't feel like a stretch because of the way that our exchange went. I decided to tell my manager that he was making me uncomfortable and told them what happened. However, I forgot to mention that I gave him a fake email address. My manager approached him and asked him to leave because he was making staff uncomfortable. This man argued with my manager in front of the entire restaurant. He was saying he just wanted to have a conversation and that was it. He refused to leave. I was standing there during the entire argument and he pulls out the email address and says, if I'm making her uncomfortable, why did she give me her email address and shoved it into our faces? Instead of explaining to him and my manager that it was a fake, I froze. I was angry and in complete disbelief of the situation. He eventually left, and my manager hated me after that. I left not long after, and to this day, that manager still doesn't know that the email was fake. I don't know why I never told her. I don't know why I froze. I don't know what that man wanted. I've thought a lot about it since then, and it was almost a decade ago. I'm glad that I didn't give him anything he wanted, but I wish that I could tell my younger self to stick to her guns and don't take stuff from anyone, especially a man who is using intimidation tactics to try and get what he wants, whatever that was. I was working at a small business in Iowa when a man came in for an interview. He was polite enough but didn't say much, but something just felt off. While my boss interviewed him, I stocked shelves, listening to the man answer our standard questions. What's your availability? Have you ever been arrested? Things like that. When he left, the manager asked me what I thought. There's something weird about him. I got really bad vibes. The boss kind of chuckled at me and said, we can't deny someone employment because of bad vibes. I took out my phone and Googled the guy's name. He had been arrested a few months prior for threatening to shoot up a gas station after being accused of theft. He lied and said that he had never been arrested. Is that a good enough reason to not hire someone? It was, and it may have saved my life. I remember September 2018, a beautiful clear day the calmness broken by the sound of police cars flying down the road. A student had been murdered in the middle of the day on a nearby golf course. She had passed a group of men who very shortly later found her things abandoned on the ground. Concerned, they called management and shortly after she was found, stabbed to death, her body floating in a pond. Everyone was in shock. This was the second murder of a young student Iowa had in just a few weeks. Was it a disgruntled golfer? A jealous lover? No. The young woman had simply been at the wrong place at the wrong time. She did not know her killer. He did not know her. He was a homeless man who was in the woods by a golf course, saw an opportunity and took it. He had a fantasy about R-wording and killing a woman. The next day, the story made headlines and plastered on the front was the killer's face. My stomach turned when I saw him. 
He looked so familiar. I didn't recognize the name, but then again, I've never been good with names. But I remember stories. I googled his name. The same story about a man being arrested for threatening to shoot up a gas station came up, and instantly I knew who he was. It was the same man that I had convinced my boss not to hire. At the job, the majority of the shifts, there was only one or two of us working. I would have been alone with this guy at so many points. So many slow hours, with few customers, so many blind spots, so many opportunities to be alone with him. It only took a few minutes for a murder to occur on a beautiful day at a golf course. So yes, trust your instincts. Hello friends. So I came across some information about an old friend, which has left me, as the kids say nowadays, shook. I figured I'd make a post to sort through my thoughts and share a rather insane story. But before we get started, my name is Mikey and I'm in my 20s. Also, I'd like to apologize for how overly sarcastic this post may seem. Humor is my defense mechanism. Trigger warning, this story mentions murder, but I don't go into much detail. Stay safe out there, friends. When I was an angsty teenager, I moved in with my mother and stepdad to escape a less than desirable situation. Because of the move, I was enrolled in a new school. This school was located in one of the sketchiest neighborhoods in the city. Everyone who resided in that area was relatively low income my family included. We had a rec center near the school that was a hot spot for, let's call them undesirables, which was primarily teenage boys wandering over from the nearby high school to catcall the girls. Lunchtime was my favorite. I loved going outside for chow and having sweaty teenage boys as for the nasty. Note the sarcasm. Anyway, during my time at my crappy school, I made an array of friends. However, there was one person who became my best friend. Let's call her Blondie. She and I got along like... What's a negative connotation? I was a people pleaser, and she took advantage of that. Blondie was nice enough, but she was problematic. Regardless, we were fast friends and thus began our very short-lived friendship. Over the school year, she mainly came over to my house, since I was an only child. We usually had the house to ourselves, while my folks were at work. However, she finally invited me to her house around the middle of the school year. I was super excited. I had always wanted to meet her family since they were such an enigma. Blondie wasn't one to divulge information about her home life. All I knew was that she lived with her mother, stepdad, and a younger sibling. I'm unsure if she was embarrassed or didn't care to share, but I finally had the honor of meeting them. Honestly, her family was amazing. They were kind and treated me very well. Not to mention, her stepdad was a phenomenal cook. The best spaghetti and meatballs I've ever had. After that, I started going to her house more and more. And you know what? I really enjoyed it. Fast forward to a month or two before the end of the school year, and it's Blondie's birthday. Her family was throwing a little get-together at her house, and I was invited. Blondie and I headed over to her house after school, and it was really a fun time. Until near the end of the day. Now, I knew next to nothing about her biological father. I knew he wasn't really in the picture. He'd sometimes drop by and say hello but I had never personally met him. This was until he had made a surprise visit to give Blondie a present. When I tell you there was a shift in the atmosphere, I kid you not. I could immediately feel it, and I was a dumb kid. We were inside the living room eating some cake, and there was a knock at the front door. Blondie's mom answered, and her face, which once had a smile, turned to a scowl. If looks could kill, the dude would be dead. 
She moved aside and this man walked in. I'll never forget how everyone in the room got tense except for Blondie, who excitedly greeted her dad. At the time, he seemed like a normal-ish dude. Maybe a tad bit on the creeper side, but who am I to judge? Blondie introduced me to her father, and we had shared some pleasantries. At one point, I was invited to get some ice cream with him the following day, which I accepted. I mean, I was getting free ice cream. Of course I was going to say yes. He eventually left, and we all got back to eating cake. I had honestly forgotten about the visceral reaction everyone had upon seeing him. Maybe if I remembered, I would have said no. Anyway, the following day rolled around, and I went for ice cream with Blondie and her dad. I can't remember much from that day other than him asking me if I had a boyfriend or girlfriend, which seems innocent enough. But the way that he asked me, it made me feel weird. I honestly can't remember much from my other encounters with this man. Nothing really jumps out to me. I know I went out with him and Blondie a few more times before my family moved to another city, and we lost touch. Fast forward a few years, and I'm attending college. I had managed to stay in contact with one person from my middle school days. Let's call her Teddy. She had reached out to me one day asking if I wanted to go to a movie, which I happily accepted. I was balls deep in the big sad at that time and needed to pick me up. A film with an old friend was just what I needed. I took the train to a nearby mall and Teddy and I watched the movie. After, we headed to the food court and got some chow. We were catching up. It had been a couple of years since we last saw each other. When Teddy suddenly perked up, she asked me if I heard about Blondie's father, to which I said we hadn't been in contact since I had moved. Teddy's face lit up, and she told me the most mind-blowing story that my little brain had ever heard. She informed me that Blondie's father had murdered a woman. Now before I continue, she was going based on word of mouth, while she was telling me all of the details. Teddy had no news articles or police reports to back her story. She was told by a friend who had heard from someone else and so on. But what she told me wasn't actually far from the truth. According to her, Blondie's father had taken the life of a street worker. He got away with it for two years and his truck got him caught. Apparently there was something unique about it. Teddy couldn't tell me much more because she genuinely didn't know. I remember going back to my dorm and trying to Google for more details, but I couldn't find a thing about it. I eventually forgot about the story until last year, 2023. I was discussing the craziest stories from my life with a friend when I suddenly remembered Teddy's story. After some digging, I finally found an article that described the crime. I clicked on it, and when I saw the picture of the man, well, words can't describe what I felt. Everything that Teddy told me was true, but it was so much worse than what she and I thought. Out of respect for the victim and her family, I won't describe what he did, but he was arrested three years after he had taken her life. I can't find any information about how he was caught, but it had something to do with his truck. He was charged with manslaughter. He took a plea bargain and in dignity to a body and only served seven years of his 14-year sentence. He had served half already because he was in custody during the trial. I looked him up again not too long ago, and I learned some unsettling information which prompted me to write this post. He was released from prison a few months ago. Guess what he did? He killed another woman. From what I've read, it had similarities to the other murder that he committed. This time around, he's charged with second-degree murder and indignity to a body. There's, unfortunately, still not a lot of information about the second woman, but both of his victims were mothers. They were both cruelly taken from this world, and I can't wrap my mind around this at all. I met this monster. I was best friends with his daughter. I don't think that I was personally in any danger. But the fact that I met someone capable of such heinous crimes, it scares the living crap out of me. I can't even begin to imagine how Blondie must have felt after learning of her father's crimes. Anyway, I apologize for the length of the story and how vague I was regarding the crimes. 
I know that some of you really want to know everything, but it didn't feel right to share their story, especially since it had very little to do with me. I was just the schmuck that was friends with the daughter. Also, I would like to provide more information about how Blondie is, but I can't remember her last name for the life of me. She doesn't share the same one as her dad. But regardless, thank you for reading. I think someone just tried to kidnap me. I don't know what just happened. Seriously, I am freaked out and at a loss thinking I'm either psycho or overreacting or someone was legit trying to kidnap me or assault me. So I work pretty late most nights and sometimes when I need something right away, I have no choice but to go to this store that's the only one open late after work. Fast forward. I was driving home and noticed a car behind me super close with their lights bright as crap. I thought that it was a cop, but made a turn, and no, it was a small black sedan. Okay, weird. So I kept going my usual route, and start noticing this car's flashing their brights behind me over and over and over, while following me my whole route home. I know I didn't drop anything, because... All I brought in the store was my keys and phone for Apple Pay. My trunk wasn't open. I was seriously getting weirded out, so I made a fast turn and started going 60 on this back road. I didn't even care about cops. I actually wanted to get pulled over. Well, this dude was right there behind me going 60 as well, still flashing his high beams. Finally, after about 10 minutes of this, there were these cops in the road doing construction, directing traffic. Then I looked back and he turned off right away. What just happened? Leaving my friend's house, I accidentally backed into a brick mailbox. My bike rack hit the mailbox, so my car was okay, but completely demolished the mailbox. No big deal, right? That's why we have insurance, right? I went to the neighbor and told him what happened, and gave them my insurance, phone number, and name. All I got was his first name. From the get-go, this dude was creepy. He kept hitting on me, trying to date me, specifically trying to feed me. I left on my drive to my mom's. I'm attending out of state college and my parents are divorced. The guy that I backed into, Robert, began to text me and call me. He was insistent that it was better for both of us to just pay out of pocket for the mailbox, sending me links to his companies that could fix it for $500, and demanding that I go on a date with him so that I could give him the cash for the repair and he could feed me. I don't know what his deal with the food was. I declined everything but started to get annoyed by his constant texts and calls. Finally, after two days of it with my responses being only, please contact my insurance, I sent him a text saying that he was harassing me. I blocked him, but he made a new number and threatened to report it as a hit and run to the police. I'm in law school, okay? This wasn't a hit and run. I blocked the second number. Then he used a new number to ask me if I wanted him to send a screenshot or video of the accident to his insurance. I admit this made me angry. I called this number and dug my nails so hard into my thigh that I drew blood as he threatened reporting things, asking me on a date, and trying to entice me to just pay cash. I finally screamed, Don't you contact me again, you piece of crap. My dad heard me and was upset that I said that to someone that I was in an accident with and that I said that to a guy who thought that I was cute and just wanted a date. I blocked the third number. The next day, he reaches out again to tell me that I gave him the wrong policy number. I told him I didn't. He then said it'd be easier to pay cash, that I was the problem, etc. He was talking to his insurance, I guess, and began trying to validate my info. 
He had my mom's name, address, and phone number. I verified it, told him to not contact me again, and blocked his new number. The next morning, I got a super early text, basically saying that he finished the claim and I was awful for making it harder than it needed to be by going through insurance and not going on a date with him. He then included, You're so beautiful and ugly at the same time. Don't take risks. Stay on the good path. Goodbye. At this point, I got scared. Fifth number block. Then at midnight, he texts, You up? I know where you live. Don't try and screw me over on insurance. I'll report it as a hit and run. You should have just gone on a date with me. I took the phone to my dad, showed him the texts, and filled him in. My dad, a pretty scary dude, then calls the guy. He answered, Shoot, I knew you were into me. Want to come over? My dad got very mad. My dad said this was beyond harassment. This was his final warning to not contact me. That we didn't care how he reported it, etc. Robert began saying that I came on to him and offered my body as a payment. Invited in my house and was a horny B-word. Instantly blocked. Police contacted. Insurance notified. All the things. Next day, I talked to insurance. Protective order filed. I get another text, telling me that I shouldn't have involved police. Blocked seventh number. Notify police. Go to stay at my dad's because dude doesn't have this address. My dad is a very tall, scary dude who loves his second amendment. Last night, watching Star Wars with my dad and older brother, the doorbell rings. Dad goes to see who it is, and it's Robert with a trash bag filled with things that I left at his house. I call the police. My dad goes ballistic. All the things. Police come and arrest the guy. Then the bag. Lingerie. A knife. Lip balm. An Adida Von Tess fetish book. I met with my attorney. Plot twist, the guy doesn't own the house. He's an illegal immigrant, is married, and is being deported. I feel awful that he's being deported. I genuinely think that he wanted to R-word and or kill me. I go back to school in a few days, and I'm terrified that he or someone else will follow me. Also, I've kept my friend, his neighbor, informed through the whole process. He hasn't reached out to her, except for a video of me backing into the mailbox. I don't know if any legal immigrant can be charged with crimes, but he was arrested for stalking, trespassing, felony assault. He tried to push my dad and then spat at him. Insurance fraud. He lied about the accident to his insurance agent. Possession of a deadly weapon with intent. The knife in the bag. And attempted breaking and entering. They just kept adding on the charges every time that he would do something new. I'm an 18 year old female who used to live in Las Vegas before I moved recently. And if you don't already know, Las Vegas is number two on the sex trafficking list. I used to go out a lot to a late night 7-Eleven and get snacks because I was bored and wasn't tired. The one closer to my home I got banned from, so I had to go to one a bit further away. I used to go by myself, and the walk there was creepy. Most of the streetlights don't work, and it's just dark and really creepy. This time I ended up getting ice cream and some kind of candy. Anyways, on my way back, I'm about to get to the crosswalk to get to the side my house was on when I noticed a guy standing outside one of the other apartment's complex. He wasn't there before, but some of the apartments are facing the street that I walk on. He started yelling something, but I wasn't sure that if he was talking to me or not because I was on the phone with my boyfriend. I crossed the street and walked past him. Something felt off when I crossed the street and walked past him. He didn't say a word. The only time he had said anything was when I was across the street. Maybe he noticed I was on the phone. I kept walking and glancing behind me. Nothing too obvious. And then he started yelling and walking faster. That time I knew that he was talking to me. 
and knew that he was following me. I told my boyfriend, and he said just walk fast home and try to get home. Also, this guy was pimped out, like dressed like he was a pimp. Gold chains, expensive shoes and clothes, etc. And I say this because I didn't live in a great neighborhood, and you wouldn't see people dressed like that. Anyways, I noticed that he was speeding up every time I looked behind me. I started panicking because I was genuinely scared that something was going to happen. But another guy passes me. We say hello like casual, and the guy that was following me runs across the street. I was like, this dude just probably saved my life because he said hi to me. I also didn't know who he was at all. I got home safe, but I'll never get ice cream at night alone again. Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I also hope that you enjoy the extra rain at the end. Get a good night's sleep, everyone. And I'll read to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.